it is. Introducing the Ducati 1299 Super Leggera Superbike, the highest horsepower bike in Ducati's 90-year history. And here to tell us about it and the future of the luxury motorcycle industry is the Ducati North America CEO, Jason Chinnick. Welcome, Jason. So great to have you here. Thank you, Tanya. Pleasure. So Friday is the International Motorcycle Show here in New York. Are you especially excited about this year? Absolutely. I mean, this year is an opportunity for us to showcase, actually not just highlight the 90 years of Ducati, but also show the entire new lineup we have planned for 2017. And so how would you categorize the state of the luxury motorcycle industry going into this show? Uh, it's, it's actually in a very good place. And in fact, as a brand Ducati, it's one of the things that we're one of the leaders in the luxury motorcycle business. And it gives us an opportunity to not only highlight the top end, as we saw here with the Super Leggera, but also the ways to, the, to enter into the motorcycling industry itself. Right. Well, let's dig deep. What's so great about this $80,000 Superbike? Well, as you mentioned, it's the highest horsepower motorcycle that Ducati is, street motorcycle that Ducati's ever created. Street legal. I street love that. Legal. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. 215 horsepower. And what's just as important as the power and the technology that's behind this is the weight. And it's 343.9 pounds. And so power to weight, and that's achieved, is incredible. And that's achieved by a completely carbon fiber chassis. So this means the wheels, the swing arm, the frame have made from some of the lightest, strongest materials known to man. I have to say, it is a beautiful piece of equipment. Now, as amazing as this bike is, you are debuting yet another amazing bike tomorrow at the show. Tell us about that. Yes, we're going to be debuting the Scrambler Cafe Racer. And now this motorcycle actually kind of harkens back to the Cafe Racers of the 60s, which was a bit of a uh, sparked by this movement of people taking a motorcycle and stripping it down to the bare essentials and kind of turning it into a little bit of a custom bike for their own aesthetic, but with glow clip on handlebars and a dark aesthetic. I like that. Now tell me, who is your demographic? Who is your key customer here in the U.S.? In the U.S., it generally is an enthusiast, somebody that's already a motorcyclist, that our brand is aspirational. So it gives them a chance. Maybe they've worked, had other motorcycles in their life, and they find something that's unique to them, and Ducati communicates that to them. So, you know, largely you would say that a large portion of our audience are men, probably in their late 30s, early to early 40s, but we've actually seen this change quite a bit. A lot of women are entering into motorcycling, and between the scramblers that we have and some of our other models, it allows them an entry into the Ducati brand. And, and women love the aesthetic as so well. So is that where you're seeing the most growth is outside of this sort of classic male population or are you seeing that growth there as well? It's consistent between okay. both parties. Okay. I mean, it's it's nice because it's new, it's refreshing, mm -hmm. and it brings a different, um, a different personality to it as of well. Of course, of course. Now, are sales here in the U.S. as strong as they are in Asia and China? Yeah, actually, North America and the U.S. specifically mm -hmm. is the number one market for Ducati globally. Interesting. Yeah, so okay. for us, that's a very important part of the brand and right. our strategy and product that we develop. The U.S. market's taken closely into consideration. And tell us how technology is working its way into the luxury motorcycle, the Ducati motorcycle. I mean, we hear a little bit about the self-driving cars and yep. the automotive industry. Is any of that working its way into the motorcycle industry? In motorcycling, a lot of the stuff is trickled down from two different areas. One is obviously automotive development, mm -hmm. uh, but the other one is from what we do on the track and Ducati's known for our racing prowess between Superbike and MotoGP and that technology in terms of traction control a lot of the safety features and things that not only improve the performance but also improve the safety for the rider are taken well, into consideration. Well I was going to say that's huge because that's part of the self-driving technology it's not really about the motorcycle driving itself but about being able to sense everything around you and give the driver a heads up when they have blind spots. And exactly that kind of exactly. And now what about the green technology that we also see in the automotive industry is that working its way into it has, but it's not something that some, that we've we have actually have brought to market as of yet. I mean, so we're always no in development. electric Ducati coming up. No, we, there's not an electric Ducati coming up, but we're carefully watching the trends and understanding how we can communicate our brand experience mm -hmm. through different platforms, and that would be one of them. But right. All right. Lots of fun, Jason Chinnick. Thank you so much for seeing us. Have a great time tomorrow at the show. Appreciate it. Thank you.